Now let's get ready for what could be a truly great fight here tonight. As we get ready to watch the hottest young prospect in boxing, Miguel Cotto, taking on Kelson Pinto, who twice in the amateurs in the year 2000 defeated Cotto before Cotto emerged from Sydney and began the professional career that's made him a rising star. Larry Merchant, uh, you have the same profile here as Vernon Forrest against Shane Mosley in the sense that Pinto is taller, perhaps stronger, and twice beat Cotto in the amateurs. Are we looking at another situation where Pinto has Cotto's number or has something happened in their professional careers that might defy that expectation? It's a good question. It's the right question. And I suspect that it's a question that surprises many fans because, after all, Cotto has already uh, declared himself in the ring as a comer, a serious comer in the prize fight world. And only us boxing degenerates know about Pinto as a Brazilian bombshell, a real fighter, maybe a real good fighter. So uh, if you give me about 12 rounds or less, I'll give you the answer then. All right. <laughs> the other question that rides on this is Cotto's move toward that great list of fighters to have come from Puerto Rico, and I'm wondering about your thoughts. Do you think that Cotto's rise to the pantheon of stars that includes Wilfredo Gomez and Tito Trinidad is insured, or is it in danger here tonight? It's definitely in danger. I think he's going to come through because of the fact that I normally put judgment and a lot of credibility on the quality of opposition. I think he's had a much better uh, opposition than Pinto. Also, the fact he's been extremely active. But he's in danger because he's fighting a guy that's not only a good fighter, but maybe mentally he has an advantage over him. And a lot of people here on the island, surprisingly, think that Pinto has a very good chance of beating Cotto. Well, there certainly could be some entertainment value in it as Pinto stalks and looks for a knockout against a guy who's probably a somewhat better boxer right now. Let's look at the tail of the tape between Miguel Cotto and Kelson Pinto, and you'll see the physical difference between the two right there on line two. Pinto two and a half inches taller than Cotto. You might also note the four-year age ad advantage for Cotto here, but when they were amateurs in the year 2000, Cotto was only 19, Pinto was 23. That may help to explain the two Pinto wins at that juncture. Arm length measured from the armpit to the end of the fist, even. Yesterday, Cotto weighed in at 140. Tonight, he weighs 154. Pinto weighed in at 139. Tonight, he weighs 149. So the smaller, stockier fighter, Cotto, has the five-pound weight advantage tonight. Rules of the bout with our unofficial ringside scorer, Harold Letterman. The Miguel Cotto, Kelson Pinto fight is scheduled for 12 rounds using the unified rules that you see on your screen. Jim, real quick, the four criteria that the judges will use to score each individual round, <laughs> clean punching, effective aggressiveness, ring generalship, and defense with a strong emphasis on clean, effective punching. Jim. Cotto will walk to the ring first. Puerto Rican fans might prefer the drama of him coming in last, but in this situation, he will enter ahead of Pinto. In his last fight against Lovemore and Doe, he faced a terrific opponent, a much stronger guy than anybody Pinto has fought. Got hit a little bit down the stretch and tired in the last three rounds of what became a close but solid decision victory. Yeah, Jim, but we noticed yesterday in our fighter meeting that he didn't look as gaunt and famished as we have seen him in the past when he must have been seriously dehydrating to make weight. He himself hired a nutritionist to tell him how to come down comfortably from his natural weight in the 50s to make the 140 pound limit. He looked stronger and more at ease than we have seen him in the past in those conditions. And let's take a closer look now at Miguel Cotto with Larry Merchant. Cotto is acknowledged now as the class of the 2000 Olympic class. Jermaine Taylor right behind him. Cotto gets the nod because of his opposition. Question here in Puerto Rico, is there room for two stars? With Tito coming out of retirement in a few weeks. But the talk of Puerto Rico has not been Tito, it has not even been Cotto. It has been Oscar De La Hoya and Bernard Hopkins. Oscar's picture is very prominent around San Juan and billboards. 
It's made tremendous inroads in Puerto Rican culture. And now Cotto awaits as Kelson Pinto takes a few seconds longer than expected to begin his walk, and here he comes. Nelson Pinto uh, won a bronze medal in the 2000 Olympics, losing to the gold medalist Abdullayev in the semifinals. Cotto lost to Abdullayev in the first round. Pinto is tall, throws long, powerful punches. There's a little bit of the Tommy Hearns and Ray Leonard in this fight. And one question will be, can Pinto land something big before Cotto gets inside of him and begins to try to break him down to the body? Closer look now at Kelson Pinto with Larry Merchant. Nelson Pinto comes from the same town in Brazil as Asalino Fritas, one of the top lightweights in the world. In fact, they work out of the same gym, share the same trainer, have sparred numerous rounds together. And Pinto insists that despite the fact that Freitas is a lightweight, that he is stronger than Cotto at least from his memory of their amateur fights. And we shall see. Right now, let's go to ring announcer Michael Buffer for the official introductions. Thomas <laughs> Caballeros Barbarami, top rank incorporated con PR, best boxing promotions. Municipio de San Juan is su honorable alcalde Jorge Santini. Rones de Puerto Rico y Budweiser presenta doce asaltos in the Division Super Lajero for the Campeonato Mundial Vacante. El Presidente, Comisión de Boxeo de Puerto Rico, Jose Peña Caricano. El Presidente, WBO, Francisco Paco Barcarcel. Los Jueces, the three judges scoring the bout, Tom Miller, John Stewart, Nelson Vasquez, and for the 125th time in a world title bout, the referee, El Arbrito Roberto Ramirez. Y ahora San Juan están listos. San Juan Puerto Rico están listos. The San Juan Puerto Rico, damas y caballeros, uh, let's get ready to rumble! Primero, en la esquina azul, pasando 139 libres. Record profesional, 20 peleas, 20 victorias con 18 knockout y cero derrotas. 139 pounds. Undefeated in 20 bouts with 20 victories and 18 KOs. De Salvador, Bahia, Brazil. Aquí es el invicto, Kelson Pinto. En la esquina roja, pesando 140 libres. Record profesional. 20 peleas. 20 victorias con 16 knockouts y 0 derrotas. 140 pounds, undefeated in 20 bouts also. 20 victories, 16 KOs. Damas y caballeros, el invicto, peador puertorriqueño a Carlos, Puerto Rico, Miguel. Viene, 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 viene. Ok, muchachos, ya yo le di las instrucciones hace un segundo, pero voy a 
tomar un tiempo adicional para refrescarle esas instrucciones. Golpes, ey, golpes más abajo de este cinturón son ilegales. Cuando le diga break, dan un paso atrás sin tirar con la guardia arriba. ¿Ok? Bajo ningún concepto están autorizados a dar con el CD del guante y con el codo. ¿Está bien? Estamos en el pelea en limpio, sigan mis órdenes. Si le doy instrucciones, no me miren. Sigan enfocados uno con el otro. ¿Está muy bien? Ok, buena suerte. Buena suerte. Vamos bien. Early on, Pinto wants to remind Cotto why he couldn't beat him as an amateur. Cotto wants to let Pinto know that was then, this is now. Pinto wobbled him for a moment. Well, Pinto seemed to have been so stiff and cold. He isn't. He hasn't warmed up. Uh, and from what I can see right here, just just a little bit right here, he's got his hands full with uh, tonight trying to beat Cotto. Cotto is much more accurate, shorter, and compact with his punches. Cotto very relaxed on his feet, bouncing as he moves in. He's already landed the one big left hook. Pinto tried a roundhouse right coming back, but missed it. There Pinto lands a left hook and another left. But Cotto catches him with a left in between. And once again, you're looking at two fighters who are likely to trade some. Well, uh, Pinto knows that he can punch too. The thing is, his punches are a little bit wider. And he's out jabbing Pinto right now, Cotto. Yes. Yeah, Pinto's up about a movement. It's not enough at this stage. He, he, and he's got his hands down. Just enough for uh, Pinto to get, I mean, Cotto to get close enough and drop a short shot over, either catch it with a left hook and a, and a cleanup punch. Roundhouse right over the top by Pinto. The long punches sometimes look more spectacular than their impact would cause you to think as they lose power traveling that long arc. Pinto throws a lot of punches like that. I can see why he's giving the Cotto problems in Amateur because he's a very good technical fighter. Seems to have a good sense of distance. Well, in the amateurs, he could probably win those fights with his jab. I was going to say, what Cotto got to do is try to get close to him and force him into an exchange where his shorter, more accurate punches would be more effective. And Cotto lands a right hand after two little left hooks inside to the body. Cotto needs to go straight to the inside and, and make him fight at close range. Cotto believes he's stronger than Pinto and wants to make that impression right away. Cotto blocking some of Pinto's step inside and landing another left. So far, Cotto doing a better job oh, yeah. of sure. reminding Pinto that this is a different fight than when they yeah, fought amateurs. Yes, right. Then Pinto is of reminding him that it's the same fight. Pinto continually complaining to referee Robert Ramirez. And now as we go to the corners between rounds, in Cotto's corner, our interpreter is Ray Torres, speaking Spanish. In Pinto's corner, our interpreter will be Marco Santos as they speak Portuguese there. Okay, let's get some water. Hold on. Oh, yeah, look, it's a derecha, it's a la mano. Hey, the right hand. Calma, okay? Come on, get the mano con calma. Respirame duro. Right here, you can see the shorter, more compact punches that Cotto delivers is much more effective, and especially when they get in close quarters. And this is what you're going to probably see continually as long as this fight lasts, which I don't think is going to be much longer. Which you don't think is going to be much longer? No, I don't. I can't see this fight. You think Cotto's in position to go ahead and knock him out? I think so. I think uh, Pinto is sh shaking up twice in that round. He's an unbeaten fighter. 
Unbeaten fighters will fight till they drop because they don't think they can be beaten. And I don't expect Pinto to go away too quickly. Pinto threw 83 punches in the round by CompuBox count. But he can't take those left hooks uh, too often. Yep. Cotto is 29 out of 63. Pinto 11 out of 83. Cotto landing half his power shots. This is the blueprint for Cotto to win the fight. Just stay calm, stay tight inside the whirling dervish that is Pinto with all those long shots. There you see Cotto's left hook getting there first. And the left hook gets there again. And now to the body. And another one on the chin. And Pinto just firing and firing with those roundhouse punches as Cotto does his work inside. Two young guns firing away. I'm very impressed with Pinto, even though I think he's going to get beat. I've been very impressed with him. Pinto seems a little wobbly on his feet. It doesn't stop him from throwing everything he can throw. around the back of Cotto's head, but he solidly landed that left hook inside. And it looks like, to my surprise, Cotto is the one that backed away for a minute here, trying to regroup and reorganize. I think Cotto thinks that he can counterpunch Pinto with those wide punches of his. Well, at this stage here, he's got to step Pinto. up inside bravely to do it. Pinto changed the whole fight around at the stage. I think by taking those hooks and those exchanges and coming back, he's got Cotto down, backing up a little bit. Pinto landed something that has made Cotto think twice. Whether it was oh, yeah. the left hook or one of those right hands, Pinto landed something that has changed Cotto's approach. And there's a hard right hand followed by the left hook. The one-two oh. puts Pinto down. It's a short punch that the left hook has been consistent all night when they get in those exchanges. Pinto holding on to Cotto's right arm. Fighting with the consistency that Cotto had been fighting with, I would give him a tremendous edge in this fight. Go to the right. Go to the right. Be calm. Go to the right. Here we see as Cotto went into a defensive position. The short left hook that's and been landing with all a, night long. Came with a right, right on the jaw, and followed with a left high on the head. Pinto was a little off balance when he was knocked down, but it was a clear, clean knockdown. But Pinto still punching with a lot of power still. But not landing very often. Combi box numbers through round two show Cotto at 51 out of 105. Far more efficient, far more economical than Pinto's 17 out of 147. And you see the 10-8 round scored by Harold Letterman as the result of the knockdown of Kelson Pinto. Pinto hey. landing a right to the back of Cotto's head. It was pretty powerful. Yeah, it was just the same goal. thing again. The short left hook that he cannot get away from. And that's the difference between a pro and an amateur. That's how Cotto has improved and matured as a fighter. That left hook. But he 
better watch out for Pimpa's right hand because he's still winging a dangerous right hand. just waiting for Pinto to throw wide and then looking to step up inside. on the sides of his head because he expects Pinto to throw round, rounded punches yes. like that. Good body shot by Cotto, countering underneath Pinto's big stuff. But Pinto does a man going right back after him, and he's really dictating the pace right now at this stage. One thing you can see for sure is that in terms of talent, Kelson Pinto belongs in the same echelon with Miguel Cotto. Oh, yeah, I'm very impressed with it. Whether his experience is going to give him a chance to stay with Cotto in this fight remains to be seen. But a guy that fights like Pinto fights, he needs to be busy fighting all the time because he's a good coordination fighter. But being inactive like that has hurt him tremendously going into this fight. But what a talent. And there's a hard right hand by Pinto. He should a lot yeah, of those right hands. You know, he's had as many fights as Cotto in the four years since the Sydney Olympics. Not the against the same kind of opponent. Competition. That was a huge left hook by Cotto. Exploded on the chin of Pinto. Pinto slightly wobbling now. Cotto goes to the body to try to solidify his advantage. Oh. The brave Kelson Pinto keeps throwing. Hard right hand shot wobbles Pinto again. And he keeps going to try to make it out of the round. And Pinto nods to him as if to say, you're right, that was then, this is now. Larry, you're absolutely right in your prediction earlier in the fight that a fighter that... that so go more to the right, try right, to the, from the right. Try go more to the right, go more to the right. Try punch to the right. Walk more to the right. Say, say jab, 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 you try to move more to the right. Come off to the right. Every time that Cotto lands, it's always a short left hook. And if Pinter was smart, he would just try to keep the fight at a distance and box at long range. He never gets hit too much when he's moving. Yeah. And this is a style I'm not sure I remember him using before, just staying in there with his gloves in his face and trying to lure his opponent into shooting first. But that's the style that he should employ, and that's what he's doing. Because at a distance, he has problems with Pinto. But Pinto sets the pace with his long jab, but sooner or later, he gets in close enough and starts an exchange, and he never sees the punch that he gets in the head with. Harold, how do you have it through three? <laughs> okay, Jim, three to nothing. 30 to 26, Miguel Cotto. You gotta give him an extra point for the knockdown when you knock Kelsey Pinto off his feet to the canvas. So that's a 10-8 round. Miguel Cotto certainly staggered him in the third round. Miguel Cotto outpunched him in the first round. Now watch the way Cotto keeps his jaw down, Jim. Great defense. Hands held high, elbows in tight, jaw down. Tell you another thing. Why did they tell Kelsey Pinto move to the right? He moves to the right, he goes right into the left hook. Maybe they think he can set up his right hand by moving to the right. Good Hard punch. right hand by Pinto landed flush on the jaw. Cotto took it very well. As long as Pinto can move in and out, he's going to be a problem for Cotto. It's when he stands there toe to toe, it's when he gets caught with the left hook. As long as he moves and boxes, he does an extremely good job because he has a good sense of distance. And good legs. Cotto gets close inside and fires those short straight punches. He's too effective. Left hook lands again. Close range. Was a 
short right hand before it that he shot over, over Pinto's low left. Yeah, it was a delayed reaction. I wasn't sure which punch <laughs> did it. Look at the courage of Pinto as he just keeps coming back. There's not a defensive moment in Kelson Pinto. He's no. here to fight an offensive fight, regardless of how hurt, how much hurt he takes when the gloves are cut up. This is Pinto's best round. I'm not sure he's won it, but he's boxed well and done had some good exchanges. Blocked. Toto happy to get out of the round. And we look ahead to this Tuesday night, which marks the premiere of a very special film from HBO. Nine innings from ground zero. An emotional look back at the role baseball played in New York in the aftermath of the attacks of 9-11-2001. It rebuilds, revisits, I should say, the thrilling seven-game World Series between the Yankees and the Diamondbacks. Now we're going to put, let your hands go. Inside and the uppercut, real short. All right? Open up with your right hand. And then lower yourself a little bit. Open up with the right hand. Okay. Don't stand on the ropes. Don't stay there. Quinto round. Quinto round. Fifth round of the schedule 12. All action so far. Pinto the last round as Larry Merchant suggested should perhaps be the case and now Pinto with his feet and his jab is scoring at will against Cotto. Yeah he seems to have got a way of getting away from the left hook and that's giving him a great advantage and now he's boxing a lot he's using his jab very good. And it's a controlling jab too. Solid right hand by Pinto. One thing Cotto has shown here as in all his fights he can take a punch. Cotto in closer, he likes to be. And Pinto backs away to create distance again. What Pinto seems to be doing is not loading up and throwing big wild punches anymore. He's now trying to hit at the target, then through the target. He's fighting a very good fight at this stage right now. I mean, I'm very impressed with his comeback. I never expected him to come back after this. And he's, and he's actually setting and dictating the pace in the fight. Pinto had fought this way in round one instead of coming out guns blazing. He still had a fight. The, fight. the short punches, I'm going to say, he's getting carried away, man, getting into exchanges, which he shouldn't. He should keep fighting at long range. And now that he's set down again, he's still falling with good calls. Cotto is probably one of the best short distance punches in the game since Mike Tyson was in his prime. You can see what happens when Pinto boxes for 40 seconds and gets his feet on the ground, his confidence comes back. And he goes back to deciding to trade punches. And that's where he should be. That's his natural instinct. Yes. But as long as he stays out there, he's okay. But when he gets in close, that's, that's, that's Kodo's fight. As the roles reverse slightly, Emmanuel. And the taller Pinto begins to outbox Kodo from out here. And they trade huge shots again. And Pinto slightly wobbled. There he goes. Second knockdown of the fight. Couldn't keep his knee off the canvas. No, Cotto, Cotto just so physically strong wants to get in close. This was a round that Pinto was winning with his boxing skills. Yeah. 
but he decided to trade with Cotto and paid the price. It doesn't look too good for Penta at this point. That puts him deeper in the hole. Just when his comeback, his head set to gather steam. Come down more. Keep your hands up. Keep your hands up. Just come down more. Stop moving around, around his right. You're getting too tired. Just come down a little bit more. Go too fast. Go too fast. This in close is too much strength, too much power, and that's more comfortable for Cotto to fight at that area. Just, and there's no way in the world that Penta should be in that close because he doesn't have arm room to punch. Two different fights. One fight when Pinto's out of the distance using his jab and his feet. Another fight when he decides to step in close and give Cotto the chance to trade with him. Cotto, as Emmanuel pointed out, the stronger fighter and this barrage of right hands, they wind up ending the fight. Cotto came out sensing that Pinto was dazed at the start of the round and went right after him. Third time Pinto's been down. He just he fell on him like a big cat. Here comes Ricardo like a lion. Maldonado, the manager and the of fight is over. The fight is over. Ricardo Maldonado came in to rescue his fighter, basically saying, this is too valuable a commodity to let him take a beat. Pinto's a good fighter. He showed it here tonight. Yeah. yeah. Well, Cotto the, the really great. interesting thing is how intelligent Cotto was throughout this fight. How he changed his tactics. He backed up, he took the lead, he went after him, and after the knockdown at the end of the last round, he studied Pinto and came out and tore right after him. He fought a perfect fight. That's from the experience of fighting all these quality fights as he's been fighting. And that makes a big difference. So Miguel Cotto erases the small blemish of two amateur losses to Kelson Pinto four years ago in the year 2000 as he decisively and dramatically knocks Pinto out at the beginning of the sixth round. A series of right hands here. Left of the body. Straight punches through the guard and one last left hook to the body to rip Pinto down to the canvas. Go to close the show, landing 10 of 13 power shots in that final confrontation. Cotto moves to 21 and 0. Kelson Pinto now has one loss. But as a debut performance on HBO and before the eyes of big time American boxing fans, Pinto did well, Cotto did better. And let's go to Michael Buffer for the official particulars on the knockout. Thomas Caballeros, two minutes, 28 seconds, round number six, dos vente y ocho, asoto numero seis, el ganador, en nueve de campeón del mundo, super lejero, de Caguas, Puerto Rico. Miguel Cotto. Move over, Tito Trinidad. There's a new superstar in Puerto Rico. Total punches, and you can see that Cotto landed 78 more, while Pinto threw 124 more. Dramatic difference in connect percentage, as Pinto was like a helicopter out there, continuing to sweep his blades, even while Cotto was busting up the housing. Total power punches, Cotto 93 out of 203, almost 50%. Pinto landing slightly higher with power punches. His jab mostly was short of the range through the early rounds. 
But all in all, a brilliant and lustrous performance by the rising star, Miguel Cotto, who stands by with Larry Merchant right now. Thank you very much, Jim. Congratulations, Miguel. All right. Thank you. Now tell us about your trunks. If you can focus on the trunks, what are, who are all those names? These are all the Puerto Rican champions. And today it was one more. When, who is going to sew your name on that uh, on your trunks? Ahora quién va a coser el nombre tuyo en esos pantalones? Otro campeón que que tenga la iniciativa y pueda escribirlo. Yeah, puedo hacerlo. Was there ever any doubt in your mind about how how you could fight Pinto, whether you could beat him, because he beat you as an amateur? Había alguna duda en en tu mente de cómo tú le podías pelear a Pinto y ganarle después que él te había derrotado dos veces en los aficionados. No te lo puedo negar. Hubo mucho nerviosismo durante todo el día, pero repasando mis récords, repasando mis oponentes, entendí que no podía ganarme. I gotta be honest. I was very nervous, but you know, when you look at my record, you look at his and the progress that I made, I knew I, I should, I would win. Did you, were you determined in the first round to go out and send a message to him, I'm a different fighter than the one you fought four years ago? Tú tenías la determinación en el primer round de mandarle un mensaje que yo soy un peleador diferente hoy en día del que tú conocías antes. Él lo sabía, él sabe los oponentes que yo me he enfrentado, él sabe con la calidad de oponentes a las cuales él se ha enfrentado. Pero sí, estoy frente a mi gente, frente a mi público. Y tenía que, y no podía dar caber duda de que esta noche iba a ganar Miguel Cotto. Absolutely, I knew I was, uh, I was send him a, a message, but he knew the message because he knew my record, all the good fighters that I had fought, and I'm in front of my people. I couldn't let him down. When you went into a sort of defensive counter-punching style with your gloves around your head, was that planned or was that something you improvised? because you saw how wide his punches were. Cuando tú te fuiste en un modo esto medio defensivo, eso fue algo que tú calculaste hacer o era por lo que él estaba pegando? No, no, eso fue un plan, fue algo que ya teníamos en mente. Tra trabajamos muy fuerte durante estos dos meses y medio y sabíamos que no cabía la derrota en este equipo. Yeah. No, it, 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 we have plan on this. If things got a little rough, if we worked so hard that if things got wrong, I would go in a little defense. You heard him at the end of the previous round to the last round, could you see that he was dazed because you tore out of the corner right after him, thinking you could knock him out? Lo golpeaste y lo hiriste en el penúltimo round. Sabías tú, sentías tú, que al principio del próximo round tú le brincaste encima y ya era cosa de tiempo. No, sí, sabíamos que estaba herido desde el primer knockdown. Vimos en su cara que estaba herido. Y me nos gritaron de la esquina, utiliza la derecha, salió la derecha. Y lo paralizó por completo. We knew that he was hurt in the previous round, and my corner said, "Jump on him right away," and that's what we did. If you had one name to pick of anyone in your class to fight, who would it be? Si tuvieras tú con alguien, con un oponente con quien pelear hoy en día en tu categoría, ¿cuál sería? Se lo dejamos a nuestro equipo, a nuestra gente que me maneja, mi empresa promotora, pero sé. Que con determinación, con buen entrenamiento, puedo vencer a cualquier oponente. I'm going to leave that to my promotional group, but, uh, but I know that with my determination and the good work, I can beat anybody. Thank you.